thanks to uh Antonio Clown and his antics against the New York Jets, I decided to go back in time to try and find the time where an NHL player quit just like AB did. And honestly, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. But after doing some digging on some forums and threads, I was able to surprisingly find some players who did the unthinkable, who quit during the middle of or during an NHL game. And it wasn't anything recent either. In fact, there will be two players in particular who will be talking about going as far back as 1977 in order to do so. But before we begin, we need to address the obvious, the event that took place with the legendary goaltender Patrick Waugh. He did in fact quit on Montreal and demanded the trade during the middle of the game, right? Well... Not really. After giving up those 9 goals against the Red Wings in 1995, Wah never dropped his equipment off, exchanged words with management, and left the game entirely. He was actually instructed to head to the bench as he was finally getting pulled and replaced by his backup. It was then that Wah began having words with the coaching staff and the owner, where he would famously or infamously claim that it was his last game in Montreal. So while yes, he did get disgruntled and wanted to leave Montreal, he technically never quit during the middle of the game. He just got upset and got pulled. So now that that's out of the way, let's go back in time. First, we'll head to 1980. This was the first year where the WHA would merge with the NHL, and it brought over a boatload of talent as well as a ton of new faces into the league. And although not necessarily a star, the name we'll be talking about stands out in more ways than one. Goaltender Michel Dion entered the WHA as a member of the Indianapolis Racers, where he earned the Ben Hatskin Trophy for the WHA's top netminder. And throughout the next several seasons, he established himself as a very reliable goaltender who could keep you in games when needed. Dion would later become a member of the Cincinnati Stingers, but the Stingers wouldn't be one of the four teams merging over to the NHL come 1980. Luckily, he would get claimed by the Quebec Nordiques in the Despero draft. The draft that saw the four merging teams absorb members of the WHA teams that were about to fold. And once entering the NHL, Dion continued to Press. Although finishing his first NHL season with a losing record of 15, 25, and 6, Dion would play like he did in the WHA, helping keep Quebec in a lot of games even while the team was facing major injury problems. With a full, healthy roster come the 80-81 season, Dion was expected to improve his numbers, but instead, he took a huge step back, failing to win a single game for the Nordiques, going 0-8-3 with a 5-3-3 goals against average. Dion only played in 12 games that season, a significant drop from the 50 he played a year prior. But it wasn't just due to the team being healthy again. Instead, it was because of something absolutely bizarre. On December 10th, 1980, Michel Dion would do the unthinkable. He quit on his entire team in the middle of the game. Now, although there's no video evidence of the scene taking place, luckily, I was able to find an old newspaper article posted a day after the event took place. Apparently, the entire sequence started when the game would enter the second period. At that point, Boston was up 2-1, and Quebec still had plenty of time to even the score. Un until Dick Redman took matters into his own hands. He would score shorthanded and then again on the power play, just four minutes apart from one another. And after Redman's second goal, at 7.39 in the second period, Dion decided he had enough. According to the article, quote, he skated off the ice, dropped his equipment, and continued into the dressing room. As he came by the bench, coach Michel Bergeron asked him, are you sure you're making the good move? Dion said, yes, according to Bergeron and kept on going. After the game, Coach Bergeron vented his frustration, suspending Dion from the team, stating, quote, Dion has been suspended. I don't want him on my team and he won't be with us in Boston tonight. Dion has no future with this team. He quit the game. Dion is a child. We're a young team and we need a man in net. This behavior was something people 
goal I had never seen before, and former Bruins netminder Jerry Cheevers was stunned, mentioning that he felt like quitting hundreds of times, but never actually did it, and Bergeron would again later tell the media that he didn't want Dion back. Dion's teammate Richie Leduc, who played with him in the WHA, tried to give him the benefit of the doubt, stating that, quote, he's a very sensitive person, and maybe the pressure was too much for him. He just broke. However, that isn't a very valid excuse as to why you would quit in front of thousands of fans. Dion would spend some time in the CHL before he would get dealt away to the Jets and later join the Pittsburgh Penguins. And to this day, no one really knows Dion's reasoning for quitting mid-game. Luckily for Dion, however, most fans tend to forget about his childish antics due to his crazy and bizarre goalie mask that he sported, which has become iconic online even as of today. But not even a mask can hide what kind of a foolish mistake Dion made, which will forever live with him for the rest of his life. Dion isn't the only one to quit during a game, however, as three years before his memorable exit, Sabres goaltender Al Smith would shock many in a scene unlike no other. Unlike Dion, Smith may actually have had a semi-valid reason as to why he quit and left the team. Smith was a goalie who played during the tail end of the original six era, and back then, NHL jobs were very hard to come by. Al learned this the hard way, taking years to come up through Toronto's pipelines, playing very little games for the team. He would also make pit stops in both Detroit and later Pittsburgh as well, also playing in the WHA with the New England Whalers, being a very solid goaltender. But at the age of 32 and making it back into the NHL, Al Smith would take any starting chance that he could, and he was promised that he would start the next game due to Buffalo starter Jerry Desjardins going out with an eye injury. But in a surprise turn of events, during warm-ups, Smith got word that the plans have been changed, as Sabres general manager Punch Imlock insisted the team play rookie netminder Don Edwards instead of Smith in that night's game, and Al Smith was not having it. After the playing of the US National Anthem, Smith instructed the trainer to open the gate to the player's bench where he would say his goodbyes, twirling near the bench as the team was set to take the opening draw, waving right at Sabres owner Seymour Knox on the way out. But unlike Dion, Smith didn't just quit. He would take off his equipment and announce his retirement on the spot once he got back to the locker room. His exit would make headlines all around Buffalo, and even after Imlock threatened Smith with his suspension, he didn't care, never reporting back to the Sabres ever again. Al Smith did, however, make a return after a brief hiatus, going back to New England in the WHA, where in his first year back, he would be named the WHA's top netminder, breaking out for one last time. Seeing something as bizarre as what many football fans got to see with Antonio Brown is very rare in any sport, as normally it's frowned upon to act so immaturely. But as shown in today's video, if you are going to quit in the middle of a game, at least make sure you go out with a bang.